Final vlog in America. Before I'm heading home, I wanted to see Dove. Dove is a watch collector, a friend of mine, and he has an incredible house. We're gonna check it out, I'm gonna share it with you. Living a life in Miami? This is my house. Nah, mate, it's not my house. While being in Miami, I finally had the opportunity to meet my friend Dove. Dove is not just a house designer or a builder, but he also loves his watches and has a really cool collection, as well as a few cars, what I want to show you, but the house is bunkers. Let's go. That S stands for sexy. First to start off with, the office. This is where the magic happens. Where Dove designs the most insane houses I have ever seen. This is literally, for me, a dream house. This is one of my favorite features. Look at this. Seeing your own cars from your office. This is the stuff you only really see on TV. And these are not your average cars either. What you see here is an Austin Martin DBS Superleggera. And, of course, the red Ferrari. Ferrari F8 Spider. Absolutely insane. You see this? This is a car lift. And a car lift is a good problem to have. You can lift this up, park another car underneath it. A house like this in Northern Ireland is like between one and two million quid. In Miami it's like 10 million, if not 20. Dove, you made this table yourself, right? Yeah. So you buy the rope planks yeah. and then you build the table. Absolutely love it. A box full of watches. We're gonna come back to that later. This is a $10 million house, right? Which is unbelievable, but look at this. This is the other house that Dove is building. This is gonna be worth about $35 million. Mind blown. Now it's time to look at his watch collection, which is quite cool as well. Quite diverse. There's cool watches there. Dove's watch collection. And you know the first thing, what I notice? The bigger, the better. And I look at myself and I just have a wee elephant sitting in a chair there. Have you seen the size of me there, mate? I just draw my eyes immediately to this. This watch is an exact replica of the watch panel I made for the Egyptian military. This is 16 millimeters big, and this is the first time I've actually seen this watch. When was the last time you wore this? I wore it from time to time. I'm a big fan of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger when yeah. I was a kid, and that's one of the watch that he wears all the time. There's a ton of picture of him with his watch at the gym. It suits you, actually. What is the watch you get the most comments? This one. Yeah? The Dark Knight. Is this the most recent purchase? No, the most recent is the RM. This is the RM28, isn't it? Yes. Why did you buy the RM28, if I may ask? Because it's not the most prettiest of RMs? It's not the prettiest. I like the round RM more than the barrel shaped one. Yeah, you yeah. prefer this one? I prefer the round one. And this one was available. That's a rarity on its own. <laughs> it's basically a horrible looking RM. It's what you have to do. You need to spend money to get another piece and another yeah, yeah. piece. But you can also just skip that. You can just go to brightandpillion.com and buy or sell your watch. May I ask how much you paid for this? Uh, it's about 125,000 for you know, a diver watch. For a diver watch. You know that a Rolex of Manor would cost you 15? <laughs> <laughs> Dove, thank you so much for, for having us. I really fucking appreciate this and so fucking house, mate. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Nico. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, mate. That was Dove. We spoke a bit about watches, spoke a little bit about business and my ambition to get into the Miami or American scene. It's actually so ridiculously motivating to see that someone like Dove, who left his own country to build something up in a different country like myself, to see that, that shit is so motivating. I think the story isn't finished yet. This is to be continued. It's gonna be interesting. We're here to see the boys from Timepiece Trading. You well, mate? Good. You well? Good. Very Everything impressed, mate. Very impressed. We just done a video about Steve Will Do It, which you can find somewhere probably here. Do you Other know? Side. Other side. You can yeah. put that in, aye? These are the guys Steve buys his watches from. I'm here and trying to do a deal and see how we can work more closely in the future. This is the perfect prime example of a guy who actually helped the entire watch community as a whole. Appreciate respect, that. Bro, respect Appreciate you. that. You set trends for the whole watch community, in my opinion. It's the coolest job oh. in the world. Luckily and fortunately, we're able to make a living out of it. And of course, we're talking about the state of the market, which is very interesting, to be fair. The Rolex market won't go down because there's simply not enough watchmakers to produce those watches. The next person that tells me that Rolex is holding watches back, I'll smack them in the face. Everyone in the world is making more money than ever, and Rolex can only produce approximately one million watches a year. The demand simply supersedes the actual supply. And then you would say, I just make more watches. But it is not that easy. People seem to not realize that watchmaking is a dying breed. Meaning that there's a lot of watchmakers very old and a lot of watchmakers are retiring. There's a small pool of new watchmakers coming in, but how much of these new watchmakers are qualified or good enough to actually go into the luxury watch industry? To give you an idea, all these luxury brands are all fishing in the same pool of watchmakers. That means means that the price of a watchmaker goes up and therefore the price of a watch goes up as well. I don't want to lick someone's ass to spend my hard-earned money. Something I absolutely 
hate is the attitude of the authorized Rolex dealers. You're never good enough to buy a watch. Let me tell you one thing. Everyone knows I'm a big Rolex fan, but fuck you Rolex and fuck you authorized dealers, all of you, by treating your customers so fucking bad. Fuck you. This is actually something that could potentially damage the industry, the attitude of the authorized dealers. The fact that people have to be grateful to spend their own money is completely wrong. And in the end, this will catch up with every authorized dealer. For us in the gray market, it doesn't really matter if the prices are extremely high or that the prices go down. We buy and sell on the day, regardless of the situation of the market. Because your customers should be number one. The customer is the reason of your company, not the other way around. The customers are not an interruption of your work. The reason why we're in a situation is the lack of supply and the high demand. Although we can't change the level of demand, we can make it into a fair system that is fair and square for absolutely everyone. One person's $20,000 must never be important than someone else's $20,000. That should always be equal, regardless of how much money you've spent. But the way that authorized dealers are working today is literally gonna destroy the demand moving forward. I mean, I've heard a lot of horror stories recently about bad, bad, bad experiences. There's only one solution on this. Rolex taking control over their own sales channels. To give you an idea, AP was done with the attitude of the authorized dealers, done with these backdoor deals that authorized dealers were doing. Let me be very clear. Every authorized dealer that I know of does backdoor deals. And everyone knows about it, and no one does anything about it. I thought this was gonna be a fun vlog, with a lot of fun stuff instead of me being angry. Audemar Piquet took away all the dealerships from all the jewelers and started their own boutiques. This is something that most probably will happen with Rolex in the near future. It's interesting because Tudor has done that. They've done something with an online sales. What you can see is that Rolex is testing things out, clearly testing things out with Tudor. If Rolex ever sells watches online, it's gonna go through one company and one company alone. Mark my words, in now in three or four years, we're gonna probably see Houdinki be the first ever authorized dealer of Rolex online. I think the gray market dealers actually have probably one of the highest integrities of yes. any other, yeah. any other industry. A deal is a deal, your word is your word. That's everything. Authorized you know? dealers, they're for sale. Check this guy out. I don't know if you've seen that before. That's the RM11 Polo. It was given to a polo team that was sponsored by Richard Neal and only two of them were sold. I'm getting an RM72. No way. Ceramic? Yeah. yeah. Are you fucking serious? I absolutely love this. It's amazing. And I think this is very cheap. Carbon carbon is honestly one of the best ways to go in my opinion for RM because you're this getting- is, This is brilliant. And our selection is even a little bit low right now to be honest with you. Usually we have two full boxes of RM but we got cleaned out right before the end of the year. Although I understand Richard Meal and I wear Richard Meal. I personally rather have a box full of beautiful Rolexes, beautiful Pateks, incredible APs. What's the value of this watch box? A million, a million three, a million eight, Two one, two three, two five five, two six five, three, three one, three seven, seven five, four one, four four, five five, four eight five, five million dollar box with the red Nadal. And we're actually a little bit light right now. Like I said, we usually have two boxes. That's nearly double my entire inventory in one box. I'm a poor c and not one Hublot to be seen, right? Not a f***ing Hublot, mate. That's it. Making a watch world a better place, one watch at a time. That was unbelievable. It was really, really cool to meet Sean, finally. I've been speaking to Sean for quite some time. Of course, they do some cool shit on YouTube. I am so impressed about their operation. They're absolutely miles ahead of us. We can do so much business in the future. It's scary. The last stop of our American trip was Philadelphia to see my good friend Roman from Luxury Bazaar. Yeah. Nico doesn't exactly speak English. Me no speak English. How are you, by the way? Translation. Nico, lovely to meet you. Need a translation. Either tell him to slow down or I'll translate. Who knows what dog bollocks means? The dogs bollocks. Go ahead. I was gonna guess. Well, is it slang or is it literal? But dogs something is really cool is dogs bollocks. The dogs bollocks. It's it's can slang. I, can I show everybody how Nico woke up this morning? Oh no no no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 Why did you have to put that in? Who's good at table tennis here? Not you. First things first, beat everyone at Luxury Bazaar with ping pong. Then we're gonna unbox some insane watches. So the trick is to make them go left and right. He'll lose his breath eventually. This is when shit's about to get real. Ready? <laughs> cut that part. Up in the drum for the shit. Out top when I speak. All cap with the speech today. Cut up in the rapture. So out of line with the phrase game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thursday Unboxing with a very special guest. Lower your cameras, please. Nico. <laughs> welcome to the unboxing. Uh, first item up a bit is RM67. What year is that? 2021. Brand and, new. And, and, oh, an olive. I love the uh, olive. To be fair, this is one of my favorite day chests. 
like genuinely jubilee bracelets steel but the two-tone steel one is class class good next up hey reference number one two six seven one zero b l n r correct one. ladies and gentlemen that will conclude today's unboxing with the crazy nico guys thank you for tuning in there's a lot of stuff that roman and i discussed and you'll see this in the near near future but for me it was now time to head back to the uk and prepare for the london watch show <laughs>